Welcome back to the Cape Chronicle. I'm Alex Gasser. Fall not only ushers in cooler temperatures, but also school sports. CMO will be celebrating the t its team with the homecoming festival and game. Here to share what to expect is Director of Alumni Services, George Gasser. George, welcome. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So tell us all about what to expect for homecoming. What isn't there to expect? We've got a lot of things. It's a week-long celebration of everything that makes SEMO SEMO. So, you know, whether it's for the students, whether it's for alumni, faculty, staff, um, friends and donors of the university, everybody can find something to be involved with during that week. Um, and then outside of, of those folks as well, we don't forget about the people who worked at the university, made it the place that it is, and have retired. So the first thing that we do that week of homecoming on the 21st of October is we honor and thank our retired faculty and staff by welcoming that, that, them back for a kickoff brunch um, that day. Uh, after that, we really don't have a lot of events for, for our side on the alumni side until we get to Friday. But of course, the student side of homecoming that Campus Life plans and prepares, um, they've got tons and tons of events. I couldn't even start to list all of them because that's their thing and I'm trying to remember what my events are. <laughs> uh, but once we get to Friday, that's really where we start kicking off with a lot more um, alumni and foundation type events. So we've got our foundation board in town for that um, so that they can you know, make some decisions and things like that to make sure that the foundation is still running the way that we all want it to. Um, and then of course that evening we have our scholarship uh, reception. So those folks who have given um, you know, large amounts of money to make scholarships happen for students. We welcome those students and the scholarship, uh, the gift, the donors themselves, to an event where they can uh, meet their, their students that are using their scholarship in order to make it through college and realize their own dreams. Uh, and then they go straight from that into Copper Dome Society um, and Alumni Awards Dinner, where we'll give our, or we'll have our Alumni Award recipients, the six of them there that evening, uh, to accept their awards and we'll be able to show a, a three to five minute video on each one of them that really showcases their time at Southeast, what Southeast um, has done for them, and what they've done in the world that makes us you know, feel like we need to honor these folks and show other alumni and students, hey, these are the things our alumni are doing. They're amazing people and for the students, you can do those same things whenever you get out there in the world. Then of course the next day is homecoming itself. So whenever I say homecoming, people think about Saturday. I'm usually thinking about Friday for Copper Dome <laughs> dinner. Um, but Saturday, uh, we'll have a, a return to form for, for homecoming in general. If everyone remembers the 150th anniversary from last year, um, lots and lots of events, lots of new events that we hadn't done before. Um, we're returning to our, our events that we've had in the past. Um, so homecoming will look I don't want to say the same as always, because that doesn't sound fun, but it'll be very familiar for um, alumni and friends. And of course, we try to amp it up a little bit more every single year, but homecoming morning starts for, for us at 8 o'clock for alumni at the Alumni Center. We want to see them for the grab-and-go breakfast. Um, that goes straight straight into the parade. The parade begins at 9.30, um, so we'll have our alumni award recipients in that. Um, the president will be in that. We'll have our alumni um, association president in there as well. Lots and lots of people in that parade, lots of uh, floats in that parade, which I know a lot of people are always really excited for. Um, after that, we start tailgating. Uh, so we have the Alumni Association tailgate in the Waking Alumni Center parking lot. And then from there, we go uh, straight into football. So I don't know if anyone caught the game over the, the weekend. I know you were there with me. Um, <laughs> so we were at that game, and it was a big, big game. Really important game for the Red Hawks to pull out, and they did. St uh, two overtimes. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. I'm still amped about that game. <laughs> Well, awesome. It sounds like it's just a jam-packed weekend of fun for not only the students, but the community and alumni coming back. And so how do, how do folks get involved with, with the events? Do they, you know, it's, sure. it's, yeah. So sure, there's a lot of information out there online. I'm sure everybody, as they were listening to me talk, wrote down every single one of those events <laughs> and when they're happening. Uh, but if you weren't writing those events down, if you go out to SEMA.edu slash homecoming, all of those events are out there, as well as all of our alumni events as well. So, you know, of course, we have homecoming. That's the big thing in October. We have other events um, that take place locally um, and outside the area as well for alumni, and we want to have them there. So SEMA.edu um, slash alumni or slash homecoming, either one of those will take folks to that. If they're looking to 
get that information because of course we send that out to alumni and, and donors and friends as well. If you're not getting emails from the Alumni Association, uh, one of two things is happening. Either you haven't updated your information because that's what we need or you asked us not to email you. Um, <laughs> at which point you may want to tell us to start emailing you again. Uh, but cmo.edu slash update is where alumni, um, donors, friends, anyone can go in order to update their information. So if you move or if you get a new email, a lot of the times I say the last place that people think to remember is me and telling me, <laughs> hey, I moved, I've got a new email, those different things. But so I, we love to know that. Water, you know, <laughs> update your, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water, shelter, update your alumni information. Okay. Those are the important things in life. That's what I say. Awesome. Um, and so I was going to ask you about um, the tailgating that you mentioned. Sure. And I know that that has just blown up over the last few years. Yeah, and so, so how do folks get involved in the tailgating? So there's, I mean, if you haven't been to a SEMO football game in the last few years, you haven't seen real SEMO tailgating. Uh, no offense to everyone who tailgated in the past, but these tailgates in the last few years have just really, really blown up. The lots are completely full. Um, and, you know, we've worked on some ways to help people get in for tailgating to make sure that they can claim a spot. Um, we'll have an announcement about uh, reservations for um, tailgating spots in the Innovation Center lot on campus, which probably doesn't mean a lot, but it's the, the lot next to my our building, um, the Alumni Center. But we'll have information about uh, when those spots will go up for people to be out, go out and purchase. Probably at the end of this month we'll be able to release, release that. Um, and then sometime in October, we'll be able to have folks actually go out and reserve those spots so they can tailgate. That doesn't mean that if you aren't able to secure one of those spots, you can't tailgate. You can tailgate um, in all the other lots that we, that we have um, that are designated for tailgating. And, of course, we have that information um, online as well. And homecoming is completely family friendly, right? Yep. That is something, there's something for everyone. Absolutely. You know, people always ask me, Copper Dome dinner, should we bring kids? And I say, well, you can. However, it is a, a three hour evening um, with me. So I don't know that you want to just have your kids sitting there saying, I'm really bored of listening to George because they might be, you shouldn't be, but every, you know, the kids might be. Um, outside of that event, everything else, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Bring kids to that event. Um, the homecoming parade, if you haven't come out for that before, it's just so much fun, so exciting. Um, I, I, you know, I don't have the hard numbers to back it up, but I think we have one of the largest, um, you know, percentage-wise, based on our size, homecomings in the state of Missouri. It's a really exciting time. We get 12 to 14,000 people um, out for that event, coming back to town. Um, it's a big event for CAPE and a, a big event for the university as well. All right, tell us one more time, when is homecoming? So homecoming, I don't even know if I said the date. Yeah. So um, <laughs> homecoming kicks off October 21st, that Monday of that week. And then the parts that everyone else is going to be at, that's uh, the 25th for Copper Dome dinner. And then October 26th, that Saturday, that is homecoming, as most people would like to think of it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, George. I really appreciate you sharing about homecoming. I know I always love going out and just sharing the camaraderie with the community. And it is always just a fun time to, to share. Um, thanks again, George, for joining us, and thanks for joining us today at the Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration among the Department of Mass Media at Southeast Missouri State University, the City of Cape Girardeau, and River, River Radio. Our executive producer is Anthony Shearer, and I'm Alex Gasser. Thanks so much for watching.